The wild areas of the eastern U.S. are home to some of this country's most charismatic animals, with many of our native species attaining international levels of fame. Of the many large mammals that call this place their home, perhaps the most easily recognizable and extensively studied of our native species has become an icon for the forested landscape and wildlife management. I'm speaking, of course, of the white-tailed deer. Easily distinguished from other mammals by their large size, four hoofed feet, and of course, namesake white tails, this is one of the very first animals that I remember learning about and trying to find in the wild when I was a kid. Especially famous for their ability to adapt to a huge variety of landscapes, these ungulates are just as capable of thriving in suburbia as they are in a wilderness preserve. No matter where they live, Whitetails have seasonal diets, which include tender plant shoots, fruits, and foliage in the summer, and acorns and even tree bark in the winter. Deer are able to consume such tough and fibrous materials thanks to their four-chambered stomachs. Each chamber has a different digestive function, and allows for the most rigid of foods to be regurgitated and chewed again as cud, to ensure maximum nutritional benefit is derived. Because much of the food they consume is nutritionally sparse, a full-grown deer may eat around 2,000 pounds of vegetable matter per year to get the energy they need to survive. That's a lot of plant materials, and in areas where deer populations are artificially dense due to lack of predation or hunting, their eating habits can drastically alter the forest structure over time, as they snack on the seedlings of many hardwood trees and limit their reproductive success. However, when populations are at healthy levels, deer provide ecosystem services such as seed dispersal, as well as serving as a critically important food source for apex predators such as bears or alligators. Deer also have some pretty incredible anti-predatory adaptations that allow them to evade those large carnivores. For one thing, whitetails can run at speeds of up to 47 miles an hour, making them among the fastest members of the deer family. They've also been documented jumping up to 9 feet vertically in the air, or as much as 30 feet forward in a single bound, aided by their powerful leg muscles. In addition to these skills, deer are generally most active at dawn and dusk, when their incredible hearing and smell increase their chances of detecting a predator, and the low light conditions limit the ability of visual hunters to spot them. As you probably already know, Male deer are referred to as bucks, and females as does. Bucks tend to be larger than does, sometimes exceeding 300 pounds in weight in the northern extent of their range, and can also be identified by their bony antlers from the summer through the fall. Different from horns, which are hollow and permanent structures, antlers are solid all the way through, and are shed on an annual basis. In the fall of the year, Usually right around the first frost here in North Carolina, antlers are at the peak of growth and the breeding season kicks into year. Often called the rut, this time of year sees bucks competing with one another for the right to produce offspring, and oftentimes the size of the headgear alone determines the victor. Offspring will be produced by the doe in the early spring, and are called fawns. These young deer have white speckling in their coat that is intended to aid their camouflage in the dappled sunlight of the forest substory, and will remain with their mothers for up to two years after birth. At that point, they have hopefully learned to avoid dangerous areas and how to find food on their own, and are also fast enough to outrun most predators. The antlers in protein-dense meat of the white-tailed deer have made it a sought-after game animal for thousands of years, and it's currently regarded as the most popular big game species in the world. This fact has allowed the whitetail to become a rallying point for sports people and conservation groups alike, and hunting gear sales alone contribute over $1.8 billion to U.S. wildlife conservation on an annual basis. Between this status and their ecological impact, it's safe to say that the white-tailed deer is among the most influential mammal species in the world, so it should come as no surprise that whitetails are considered the most abundant, 
and, in many areas, only large herbivores found throughout the vast majority of the southeastern US. But things weren't always so balmy for this species. Like so many of the large mammals that once inhabited the southeastern US, European colonization would result in unregulated hunting and habitat alterations that caused massive declines in white-tailed deer populations. In fact, deer populations are estimated to have declined by over 99% of pre-colonization levels by the early 1900s. At this point, sports people and nature enthusiasts realized that action had to be taken if deer were to remain a part of the natural landscape, and the very first state wildlife agencies were founded at this time to implement hunting regulations and restocking efforts. The recovery program was a success and populations in the modern day are very similar to pre-colonization levels. Conservation stories like that of the white-tailed deer remind me that when we work together, we can accomplish amazing things for our native wildlife and keep our natural landscapes wild for future generations. All right, everyone, that's just about it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the white-tailed deer. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like on this video, and consider subscribing to my channel for new educational wildlife content, coming on Saturday mornings as often as possible. Also, if you haven't already, feel free to check out my Twitter and Instagram pages at The Wild Report for photos and video clips from my adventures. Thanks so much for watching, and keep adventuring everywhere. This has been Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.